I've spoken for the last couple of years uh, at this forum on the Wild Not Ways Initiative Phytophthora Project. I'm not going to rehash some of the things, thing, uh, uh, some of the, the uh, messages that we were able and and uh, I guess outcomes we were able to talk about in those previous um, uh, presentations. I think today, for me personally, is probably a little bit of a celebration uh, on a number of levels. And that's probably going to be the level of the, 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 the detail that I'm going to present to you. Apart from this, this first graph here, um, this was uh, a graph out of, the, out of the State of the Environment report that was released by the um, Federal Minister for the Environment at the National Press Club in May last year. Uh, what it shows is the, uh, the 10 invasive species listed as affecting the greatest number of Environment Protection, Biodiversity and Conservation Act listed threatened species in Australia. Uh, number one is the rabbit, and number two is Phytophthora dieback. <coughs> Phytophthora dieback is one of the most unstudied um, uh, threats to Australia's terrestrial biodiversity, and in some instances, continues to be one of the most unmanaged uh, uh, threats to our biodiversity. I'm going to quickly talk about two, um, two well, I'm really going to focus on two uh, aspects of the Wild Up Ways Initiative. That was a significant investment by the federal government under the EPBC Act. Uh, to start to address issues for Phytophthora dieback management in the Otway Ranges. Really, I want to focus in this presentation on the training outcomes and also on some of the on-ground management. Phytophthora dieback uh, is, uh, for those of you who are not aware, is an EPBC Act listed threatening process. Uh, in a democracy like Australia, um, we only get out of bed if there is some form of policy or legislation or regulation that says we have uh, the support of the people to do that. Normally, the decision hierarchy in Australia in a neo-capitalist system is profit, brand, health and safety, environment. Environment is last in the decision hierarchy unless we have laws to protect the environment, we don't get out of bed. That's just the way it is. So we do have laws, and that's why we get out of bed. Barb was involved with uh, Joan Kerner in developing the Flora and Fauna Guarantee Act in, in Victoria. That means our colleagues along <coughs> from Parks Vic and Deca have a reason to get out of bed. The reason the Wild Upways Initiative was able to be funded in the first place under our democracy was that we had the national laws, and we had a national threat abatement plan for Phytophthora in this instance, and that allowed that funding to flow through to the CCMA. Um, Phytophthora dieback, when it gets uh, motoring within your ecosystem, will continue to march through that system and degrade it until there are no more susceptible plants left, and the system will transition into a post-infested landscape. It's a state transition process from pre-infested to post-infested. The post-infested landscape is different, does not support the functionality of the pre-infested landscape. Uh, the disease is moved in soil and in water and it likes warm conditions and it likes susceptible plant species. The plants are infected by the pathogen the pathogen degrades uh, the plant tissue and it dies and the plant and the pathogen can move through that system mainly by root-to-root -root contact or also downhill movement. This is data from the eastern outways that Barb's been monitoring for the last few decades. The white squares show uh, areas that are non-infested in this site, that's off Bald Hills Road. The red areas show that where there was measured active inf infection of the pathogen, killing plants, and the yellow areas represent post-infested landscapes, transition. And uh, from 1989 through to 2015, there was about half the area, initially about half the area was infested. Uh, by 2015, there was only 8% remaining. Once it's in your landscape, if you don't treat it, you're gone. It's all over. 
So unless you treat, that system is going to transition into something that's post-infested. The Wild Otways Initiative, uh, recognised under the federal EPBC Act, was allowed, uh, allowed funding to contribute to on-ground management in the Otway Ranges, and there were a number of, of objectives that were identified that needed investment. Uh, the one I'm really going to focus uh, on today is uh, the training aspect and spraying phosphine. Training is absolutely essential. Everybody has to be pulling in the right direction. And so the training programs that were developed and delivered by the CCMA are some of the best we have in Australia, and that is the result of this federal government funding. Absolutely fantastic. We'll talk about that briefly. Spraying phosphite. Uh, phosphite is a salt-like chemical. It doesn't act directly on phytophthora. It acts by switching on defence mechanisms of plants that are susceptible to the pathogen. It's a little bit like an inoculation. Been used for many decades in Western Australia very, very successfully. Never been used as a general management tool at all in Victoria, despite the fact that we've known about this for decades, never been used. Um, one of the outcomes of all of the work that we've done, both the small mammals and the, 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 uh, all of the, the, fight, the Wild Otways Initiative programs has been uh, presentation of data and the availability of data through the CCMA. And that, uh, that uh, progress of the disease that I showed you in the previous slide has actually been animated on the web portal that the CCMA have put together with Deakin University. And it's well worth having a look at it. Look at it. Look at that animation and the progress of the disease in the in the actual landscape, and uh, and those sort of things are really useful. And it's really useful for you to just go back and explore what what could be available, what you might want to get from the CCMA. The Phytophthora program was one of the most successful projects I've ever been involved with, without a doubt. And it's a great way to to enter the. The, the end of your, your career starting to finish on a high. And the reason, the single reason it was so successful was the wonderful collaboration. It wasn't just wonderful, it was land management led. And uh, here we have uh, just near where that, uh, that animation of the Phytophthora movement across the landscape. Uh, this is a track called Peregrine Track. And uh, we're working with, uh, with uh, our water run colleagues uh, doing some uh, phosphite spray training there. And uh, Matt sitting in the audience, good on you, Matt, and a few others of us around. I think Tim's here as well today. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that was uh, those, those sort of uh, training and collaboration were absolutely fantastic. The training began early and it was really driven by FFM Vic. Uh, thanks to Dave Roberts for this, this particular slide and also for the momentum and also to Andrew and PV in, in, in the district. Um, that was uh, really drove a lot of engagement, uh, and uh, and so that was a terrific response for me personally. Um, the walks on country with uh, traditional owner groups was just unbeatable. Um, the phosphite treatment training you can see here, we, we um, which was really facilitated by by CCMA. Um, I can't underrate um, how much work they put into to really helping us get together. Um, that was fantastic. Um, walk on country uh, with Eastern Ma people looking at Phytophthora and Phytophthora issues. I'm, I'm not going to forget that. Um, I forget the name of the lady. She's her back, back to us is, is, is here. Can, don't you know? Doesn't matter. I forget her name. But she was just, hey? Yeah. 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 That was fantastic. It was a great day, just absolutely fantastic, and a lot of feedback. And this sort of training was was just so rewarding for us all. Um, training was provided to local shires, uh, to land managers on the coast, and um, got great feedback and engagement from greater drivers through to, to managers um, and the community. Here, Jess Miller is out, actually out of our area because uh, the uh, success of the training program was recognised outside of the Otways and, and, 
and just made the effort to get up to the Brisbane Ranges and, uh, and to work with some of the people up there. Phosphide application is the land management tool. That's it. Nothing else. Uh, if you've got the disease in your patch and you don't spray it, eventually that patch is gone. And for several decades, that's been the management tool in Western Australia, uh, along with their, their, their really stringent and disciplined uh, management of infested and uninfested landscapes and the separation of works. Um, we were able to undertake uh, quite a bit on, uh, on fo uh, research on, on phosphide application in Victoria here, but really where we had the big wins uh, were the applications on the ground, uh, both at Carlisle Heath, Egan's Track, which is a bit further down towards Hordenvale or, or down towards Devondale, and um, the aerial applications in the Eastern Otways and the Carlisle Heath. Um, it took us so much hard work and I'd like to celebrate uh, uh, Tat Lovett in leading us into the quagmire of, of approvals that we really needed to get. And, and she did it with such courage and a smile on her face, I'll never forget that. But 209 days after actually finishing the paperwork, we got the approvals to be able to, to spray uh, phosphite in Victoria. Uh, that involved a hell of a lot of training uh, we brought in people from Western Australia, national, <coughs> probably the best nationally uh, recognised uh, practitioners in, in phosphite application for phytophthora dieback management. Uh, there's Danique Delaporte on the right with Jess introducing some of the aspects of, of that training down at uh, Jellybrand at uh, Deca. Uh, we did infield training for phosphite application, on ground phosphite application. Here we are again on Peppermint Parade in Carlisle um, and uh, we've got both uh, state government land managers and contractors uh, on training programs there, led by the uh, West Aussies again, our, our far-flung cousins. Um, I would like you to notice something about this photo. Yep, am I to time complete? Okay. These are some of our best land managers in, in Phytophthora in Australia. The lady sitting down second uh, to the left is, is Sarah Barrett and she's uh, led the program in Western Australia. And here's some actual on-ground treatment happening in Carlisle. And here's a photo of a plane flying over Den Denham's track in the eastern Otways. And Jess, you got out of jail because Jack removed any hope of me playing this video <laughs> for, of you. Uh, and I think that's a good place for us to finish. <laughs>